Thank you, loyal blog readers and listeners. Welcome to this week's installment of the Class Action Weekly Wire. Joining me today is my colleague, Tyler Zmenk, uh, here at Dwayne Morris. Thanks, Jerry. Great to be here. Today, we're discussing the most recent decision of the Illinois Supreme Court in Mosby versus Ingalls Memorial Hospital, a decision by the High Court regarding uh, exemptions under the BIPA statute, which is the uh, source of so much class action litigation here in Illinois. Tyler, you're one of the foremost thought leaders in this particular space. What's your read on this particular decision? Sure. Well, I think it's a significant and rare um, defendant-friendly ruling, and this um, exception at issue in the case um, could, could be potentially pretty broad and could be a, um, a basis for defendants to assert um, viable defenses in cases that are sort of less obviously um, involving or related to healthcare than this specific Mosby case. But um, with respect to this case that went before the Illinois Supreme Court, the plaintiffs were nurses and the hospitals they worked at required them to use a fingerprint-based medication dispensing system. So basically the nurses had to scan their fingerprints to verify their identities and the system would then give them access to controlled medicines, which the nurses would then give to their patients. So the plaintiffs sued the hospitals they worked for, in addition to the company that sold the medication dispensing device. And they alleged that all the defendants violated the BIPA by using the device to collect their biometric finger scan data without complying with the BIPA statute's notice and consent requirements. In the trial court, the defendants moved to dismiss, and they did so on the basis that the claims failed because plaintiff's data was excluded from the scope of the BIPA. And specifically, Section 10 of the statute states that, quote, biometric identifiers do not include information captured from a patient in the healthcare setting or information collected for healthcare treatment payment or operations under HIPAA. And as we all know, HIPAA is the federal um, health privacy statute that applies in um, many circumstances and is often um, cross-referenced in state statutes. So defendants argue that the latter clause regarding HIPAA applied and that plaintiff's fingerprints had been used so that the nurses could provide medicine to treatments, meaning the fingerprints were collected for healthcare treatment under HIPAA, but the trial court denied the um, motions to dismiss, which led to the appeal first to the appellate court and then to the Illinois Supreme Court. I thought that the trial court's disposition of the exemption, as well as the discussion by the Illinois appellate court regarding the either narrow or broadness of that particular exemption was very interesting. I know in handling these sorts of cases, plaintiffs always argue that exemptions to liability should be construed very narrowly, uh, but it seems like in this particular case, the Illinois Supreme Court uh, ruled um, in a very practical and straightforward way with respect to the exemption. What did you find interesting between the trial court, appellate court, and Supreme Court's treatment of the exemption? That's a good question. I think um, primarily the appellate court's um, reading of the healthcare exception in the BIPA statute was um, less based on the plain language of the statute. And as we know, the first rule of statutory interpretation is go with the plain language of the statute and read every word so nothing is superfluous. And um, that is what the Illinois Supreme Court did here. And also, um, interestingly, what one of the three appellate court justices did, and specifically appellate court justice Mikva, um, thought that the exception should be applied more broadly in the way that the Illinois Supreme Court did end up um, interpreting it. I went to law school with Justice Mikva, uh, a good friend and very well respected in the bar. Did you think that uh, the dissent in terms of its interpretation somewhat carried the day and swayed the Illinois Supreme Court in terms of the result that we saw here uh, from the high court? Yes, absolutely. I mean, in Pretty much every respect, the Illinois Supreme Court agreed with um, Justice Mikva's dissent. The um, High Court unanimously held that, um, as Justice Mikva opined, that the BIPA's exclusion 
for information collected for healthcare treatment, payment, or operations under HIPAA can apply to the biometric data of healthcare workers and not only patients. And obviously here, we had plaintiffs that were nurses and thus healthcare workers. Going to the specific analysis that was adopted by the Supreme Court and Illinois Appellate Court Justice Mikva, um, the High Court determined that the relevant sentence of Section 10 excludes from the definition of biometric identifier data that may be collected in two separate and distinct scenarios rather than overlapping scenarios. Specifically, biometric identifiers do not include one, information captured from a patient in a healthcare setting, or two, information collected, used, or stored for healthcare treatment, payment, or operations under HIPAA. And the Supreme Court, again, agreed with defendants that the two categories are different because the information excluded under the first clause originates only from the patient, whereas information excluded under the second clause may originate really from any source. And Regarding that second HIPAA clause, the Supreme Court observed that the Illinois legislature borrowed the phrase healthcare treatment, payment, and operations from the federal HIPAA regulations. And it's important to note that the federal HIPAA regulations in turn provide relatively broad definitions for those terms. So it remains to be seen just how broad the um, BIPA's healthcare exception will be when applied in other future BIPA cases. Well, it seems to me this is a gem of a ruling and one that defendants both in and outside of the healthcare industry should put in their toolbox as an additional line of defense to oppose efforts to certify classes or for plaintiff's lawyers prosecuting uh, BIPA cases. So thank you very much uh, for your analysis, Tyler, and for being our guest on this week's Class Action Weekly Wire. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jerry.